Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Vince, and welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. A few days ago, the devs finally released Light Campaign 4.27, and that makes me super happy as a certified campaign enjoyer. So, enjoy the video. Now that voiceover me has shut up, we can finally start playing the game. Our starting country is gonna be Furinio, which is basically the game's equivalent of a country kind of like Italy. We're gonna be making sports cars, supercars, and hopefully, we're gonna be the best supercar sports car company in the entire world ever and as you can see i have a free time score multiplier and then as you can see i have no base tech no other dealerships competitor difficulty is 100 percent i'm going to start with small factories and home dealerships only at level two so this should be a pretty hard start and a little bit more realistic so let's get this going congratulations on starting solaro your family connections have granted you access to a level two car dealership network to help you get started this will allow you to sell cars at farinia while it only has a small reach it can be upgraded once you are ready to cater to a wider market the year is 1946 and you currently sell cars and het visia and farinia so the first car we're gonna do we're gonna be more on this side of the the spectrum anyways so i'm gonna go with a I might either go with a sports car or I guess we could go with like a convertible or a GT car, but I'm going to go more to sports car because that's basically how I build cars anyways. It, they're always sports cars. I'm kind of dumb when it comes to stuff. I'm like a uh, bigger engine and then the game is just like, yeah, that's a sports car, dude. All right. So there are really only two this, like body styles we could really use in the beginning here. I mean, we could use fucking Philman's train that's over here. That's a great idea, but I feel like I'm just I'm not gonna use the 103 inch one or whatever that size is in other measurements that aren't real. Um, but I'm gonna go with the smaller one since you know smaller equals less weight, and I'm gonna go with aluminum panel materials since we only really have a small factory to start off with anyways, and I'm gonna go with a ladder chassis, steel chassis, a la yeah ladder chassis, steel material front longitudinal and double wishbone back and front because you know you gotta be a little bit sport huh what the hell where where the bumpers come from is that normal oh this one has bumpers but this one doesn't that's weird huh i i never saw that before i never saw a car come with bumpers like that that actually caught me off guard for some reason i was like what the heck Okay, uh, engine family. We could call this like the GE12. And then like for the variant, it could be like the Series 1. And then GE12, MK1. Actually, I want to go. We could do this 4.2. Because that's the. I'm going to be like a 4.2 liter V12. Boom. Let's get, let's get the. Let's get it a little, little bit smaller. Because it's 1946. We can't really have a giant engine, you know? Now, also want it to be square, more or less. There we go. Completely square. Direct action overhead cam. Two valve cylinder. It's going to be a Hemi. Like, what the hell's going on with my camera? Oh, I've never seen that before. That's kind of strange. Oh, it's fixed. Okay. That was weird. The camera was just acting really weird. Direct acting overhead cam. Two valve for cylinder. So, it's a Hemi, I guess. And then we'll put one quality, one extra quality into the engine uh, family itself. We'll give it a harmonic dampener, cast, cast, cast. And then we're not going to touch any of that yet. No turbo because they don't really exist yet, even though they did. But I guess we can't use them. We're not cool enough. And I'm going to go with a single barrel. We can go with a six carb. Single barrel, six carb with like performance intake. We're not going to get any reliability, but at least we'll have like 200 horsepower, hopefully. Tubular, dual exhaust. No first muffler and baffled second muffler. And we can rev the 6200 RPM. Wow, that's crazy. Usually my first car in the campaign would only ever rev to like negative 2 RPM. And then it would break. That's about right. 214 horsepower. That's like, that's literally almost like perfect. I actually like that a lot. We can set the, ti we can set the timing to have peak power at 5400 RPM it looks like. There we go. 220 horsepower. This is going to be the fastest car in the world, man. I'm not going to do any quality, though, because that's going to make everything really expensive. Everything here is good. We can up the compression a lot. So we get better gas mileage, which doesn't really matter. That honestly doesn't matter. We're making 
sports cars, supercars. 260. That's too many. That's too much horsepower. Uh, I guess the best way to kind of choke that out a little bit is to uh, restrict. Okay, we're just gonna we're just not gonna have any tires. This car is just not gonna be able to go around corners. It's just fast in a straight line, I guess, because we won't really be able to do anything with tires. Eh, who needs to get their power down? Okay, I'm building this the American way. So maybe I have to not do that. Since this is campaign and it actually matters how good the car is. So I guess 194 horsepower is good. And oh we're knocking. That makes sense. Oh 213. Oh, we're still knocking. 229, whatever. We're just stuck with a lot of horsepower. I never thought I would say that like a bad thing, but whatever. What's the sound like? Oh, so loud. Why is it so loud? It's really loud. Couldn't even hear me yelling over it. We could use this like fast back body or like this one, which looks kind of stupid, honestly. So I'm gonna say the first one's gonna be the fast back. Kind of kind of weird roadster GT thing. And then for the transmission, we're just gonna go from five speed or four speed. It's a four speed. They don't got a five speed yet. Estimated top speed of 147, so I'm gonna put it right there. We wanna go that fast. Fastest car in the world. We're so cool. Open differential. And then we'll go. We only have cross plies. Like I said, we're not gonna get our power down at all. But I am gonna go sports compound. Well, we can only do 145 <laughs> tires. Um, we gotta do a little bit better than that. Gotta make these wheels a little bit bigger so we can get at least 155s in the back. Recommended width of 193s. We can only do 155s. Unless I give it like 12 inch rims and that looks stupid so i guess i'm gonna have to make the wheels actually make sense and then make it look better in the the fixtures and then we really don't have any options for brakes we just have to put drums on here so sure we'll have some of those we'll give it a more sporty pad type because like i said this is a sports car so you know a little bit of cooling airflow we got to get some brake airflow and then convertible type none this is not a convertible We'll have a sport luxury interior. And I guess we won't up the... We can up the quality on it a little bit. Ooh, there we go. No power steering because it doesn't exist yet. And we got issues with wheel spin. Makes sense. Low comfort, low drivability. I'm not surprised. We got lots of problems going on over there. Car has severe issues with wheel spin. That is the one that it is like, dude, you got to fix that. So we got to fix that. Oh yeah, there's your problem. 95% wheel spin in first gear, 95% wheel spin in second gear, 79% wheel spin in... Well, okay. That's crazy. We can keep the top speed pretty high, so it's kind of has a lot of overdrive. Overdrive is always good. And it probably also has something to do with these bicycle-ass tires that are on the car, so... Definitely gotta do something about that. You gotta make the tires way bigger. There we go, 165s. We're literally just going to be stuck with crazy wheel spin, it looks like. How much is the car? Oh, we're a little bit, uh... We're a little bit more expensive than the normal sports cars. So I guess we can be like a premium sports car, yes. Front dampers are hard, blah, blah. All right, I will go design this and do a little bit of optimization and I'll be right back.
All right, here we are with the probably going to come out in the 50s. The 19, air quotes, 50 Solaro Aero GT. And it has a V12. It's pretty cool. I made it basically exactly as the other version that I posted in my Discord. That the game corrupted. I recorded this once already. Anyways, besides that, what we have to do... Because we have this GT version, right? You know, we want to sell a little bit more than just GT. So we're going to clone that and make it the GT Coast. Or just the C-O-S-T-E. The Coast version. Which is going to... It's just going to be a convertible. That's the little... That's the only difference. It's just convertible. So we go right here. Trim body. Boop. Convertible. Oh, I think it kind of ruins the taillights a little. Ooh. Yeah, we kind of have a messed up rear bumper area now. We're going to have to fix that. Also, we can make this one a different color. This guy can be like can be like blue or something, like a nice blue. Oh, huh. that blue looks pretty good. I like the blue. The convertible version. Oh, we got to change the side. Like, got It's not the Aero GT12 anymore. It's the Aero Coast 12. Look at that. So fancy, yes. I have a monocle. All right. And you are a convertible. Convertible guy. Convertible sport. Low comfort and convertible penalty. What do you mean convertible penalty? You are literally a convertible. Huh? Weird. Manual soft top. Sure. Let's see. 600 score, 300 score. That actually should be pretty good. We should be making a little bit of money from this. Let's see. Uh, engine family is going to take 16 months to engineer. That's not too bad. Uh, we don't really got the money right now to like put anything into this. I guess we can optimize the process, even though that'll make it a little bit more expensive. Tooling is going to be basically fully manual. Like, our cars are basically handmade at this point. Now, for our engine factory, you can see what we got going on here. I don't want many cars to be built, to be honest. So, let's see. How many en how many engines is are going to be made? Cross per Okay, that's output. 16. 16,000. I think this is good right here. I guess we can add we can add a little bit of a QA testing. We got a little bit of money to do to use. It's gonna cost twenty million dollars to put this little tiny building right there. But I guess it's kind of useful. It's useful, I guess. Um no automation. Oh, 229 engines. Okay. It's alright. All right, and then we head on over to the car factory. Yeah, handmade parts. We are handmade. That's the thing. Staff required. How many cars are we gonna build? Not that many. I guess we're gonna add QA testing to this. Why not? Since these cars are literally like handmade, it's just like why you're building it. Is it good? Yes. Okay. Then sell it. I guess. 116 produced a year, 121 produced a year. That that's actually pretty good. That's not too bad. And if they're not selling too good, we can always open our borders in 1950 to the Lua, which is basically like the Middle East and everybody's freaking loaded. Okay, let's see. Oh, look at the profit. Yo. That's before we even touch the margins. Oh, that was with the margins. We can also put like a 20% deposit down for these cars. Yeah, look at that, dude. That's cool. One year for the break even. See a little bit of that. Let's see. Eh, it's not as good, but yeah. Okay, wow. That's actually crazy good. All right. Let's continue. Let's complete this design. How much is this going to cost? Total projected cost for the project is 57 million. We have 150. So I, dude, that's actually not too bad. 17 months engineering, a little bit over a year. Let's deactivate that loan. We don't need it. And let's sign off on the projects. Yes. 
It's going to come out in 1947. Let's see. Let's speed up time a little bit. And once this car comes out, we'll start seeing how it's doing. And we will drive it in Beeman G just to see what people would be driving around. Let's see. Oh, wow. We're actually starting to make a... Well, they're pre-ordering the car a little bit right here, as you can see. So, Let's see, we got two. Oh, wow! Almost five hundred thousand dollars in profit, and we're making almost. We were making almost a million there. Oh, what happened? Oh, what's happening? Oh, we're making money again. That was kind of weird. We just weren't making any money for a second. We are making twenty-two thousand dollars. And we have free, we're building like 300 a month, which is pretty cool. So I will bring this car over into BMG and we will drive it. This car is selling pretty good so far. And in the next video, we will see how uh, um, this car continues to do. And we might be able to make a new car in like 1950. We can make another car that's more uh, of a luxury car. All right. I'll see you guys over in BMG. And here I am in Beeman G. Let's just go for a nice relaxing drive. Uh-huh. We got a hole in the side. I don't know what that is. Actually sounds not too bad for a V12. V12 fan. V12 people are freaking screaming right now. For a car designed in the 40s, this is pretty fast. Except the wheels look like they're about to disintegrate, which I wouldn't be surprised since they're cross flies. How are the brakes? Oh, not too bad. is actually pretty fun to drive i like it it is pretty loud though talk when I'm on throttle um, I'm heading over to the track right now see how it does on the track since I'm not gonna do an actual race I'm just gonna drive around the track see how it does at the end of the series once we finish the campaign I'll drive every car I built if I can oh I knocked the bumper off oh no I got the fake bumper under there now okay let's go
that wasn't good. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, this car is actually pretty cool. Um, so tell me if you enjoy me doing campaign. I don't know what else to say at the end of the campaign video. Until next time, I'm Vince. I'll see you guys later. Love you. Bye. Mwah.